Hey, welcome back. Welcome to day two of our devotions. My name is Joel. I introduced myself yesterday. I'm the youth pastor here at Manchester Central Campus with my amazing wife, Amy. And we are continuing today our journey uh, looking at the balmy Bible story that is Balaam and his talking donkey. And uh, I gave a big intro yesterday about this. So hopefully, if you're watching day two uh, here with me now, you have done a couple of things. I gave you a few different things. Hopefully you've watched uh, video number one and you've read that and you've gone through all that. If you've not, go and do that. That'd be awesome. And hopefully you have read through Numbers 22, the key scripture for this story, and made some notes and thoughts and kind of got a bit together of like the picture of the narrative that we're looking at. If you've not done that, I encourage you to take a second this morning and go and read Numbers 22. So you really understand about what we're talking about here as I kind of pull some stuff out of this story. I'm going to be glancing this way. I'm going to warn you already because I've got some notes and I want to make sure I go through this properly with you this morning. So let's go through this. Without further ado, let's address the donkey in the room. Um, why is there a talking donkey in the Bible? This is mad. This is a mad story. Can we really bring wisdom out of this? Well, yes, we 100% can. The Bible is God breathed, every scripture is God breathed, and there is some gold hidden in amongst the balmy craziness of this story. So, lesson number one that I want to pull out for today and talk about, and they're going to get you guys to kind of pray into in your devotional time, is lesson one from this story is God sees the heart. Hopefully you've read Numbers 22 and you would see that Balaam in this story isn't really in a relationship with God. He's actually using God for profit. He actually uses God as a profit for hire to get the highest bidder to gain for himself, not to be in relationship with God and do the will of God, but actually he, his heart is not positioned and aligned with God's heart. It, it's positioned for profit and personal gain. And God sees the heart. In fact, Balaam himself is so notoriously corrupted in his heart by money and greed and personal gain that the New Testament multiple times mentions him and references him as a warning. In 2 Peter 15, we read, forsake the right way that you've gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Boah, who loved gain from wrongdoing. This is thousands of years later, but still his reputation of having a heart that is positioned to profit and personal gain carries on. And the reality is God sees the heart. Balaam saw his communication and his, his relationship, whatever minimal relation that was with God, as one for gain for himself. He did not position his heart to worship God or to follow God or to do the will of God. He positioned his heart to see what he could get out of God. And that is not what a relationship with God is about. So God sees our heart. God sees the position of our heart. 1 Samuel 16 says, the Lord does not look at the things people look at, but the world looks at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. He doesn't get distracted by the things humanity get distracted by. He looks at what matters. He looks at our heart. And God saw Balaam's heart and saw that it was corrupted. And we'll see a bit later on in the story that he begins to test Balaam and ask things of Balaam to test where his heart really is. And the reality is our heart towards God, our heart position, how we approach God is so important. So my question for you today to take away right now into your devotional time is this. What is the position of your heart? And how is that affecting your relationship and your communication with God? Does your heart align with God or is it actually a bit of a barrier blocking you and your relationship with him? Because God is not looking at our outward appearance. God is not looking at our successes uh, in the natural world or our, or our job or our title. He's looking at our heart. So I want you to go away and take some time to pray into this and do a bit of a heart check to see where your heart is at. Sometimes we need a bit of an MOT on our heart and we need to realign with God. We need to position it to be to speak and communicate with God and be aligned with his heart. 
And that's what I want you to do today. It might be that you go, oh, I'm actually aligned and you've done a great moment of encounter and worship. But maybe God might reveal to you, oh, actually, there's a little, little thing there. Just like Balaam's heart was, was leaning towards profit and personal gain. Maybe there's something you need to realign with God, hand back over to him and say to him, God, you can have my heart. You can have my all. I worship you for who you are. Not to gain anything from you, not to get profit or to get personal glory, but to worship you for who you are. So go away and do that. Pray into that now. And I'll see you tomorrow for day three of our devotions.